Hi there, we're back again with another short video on exam technique. I just wanted to signpost uh, with you, literally signpost, a few phrases that you might want to use to, uh, to show to the examiner that you're trying to evaluate a question uh, in an economics exam. Evaluation skills are really important. Sometimes how you start a paragraph can be a useful little signpost just to help a tired, weary examiner give you the evaluation marks that hopefully you deserve. So how do you signpost evaluation? Well, signposting is the way that you start a paragraph. So here's just a few examples of, of signposting in action. The common one, the ubiquitous uh, starting point is uh, however. You know, however, uh, another view is whatever. So start with however, you won't go far wrong with that. Okay. An alternative view is a good signpost uh, to use because that, providing you do have an alternative view, then uh, you can put uh, a contrasting argument into your evaluative paragraph. I, like, I quite like alternative view. If we drop one of the assumptions, wow, so if you challenge one of the assumptions of the model, then you sometimes get a different argument emerging. Now that can be a subtle clue to the examiner that you're aware of the importance of assumptions. That's particularly the case, for example, if you're looking at uh, competitive markets versus monopolistic markets, if you're looking at um, economics of demand choices so for example behavior economics challenges the assumption of rationality oftentimes if you're looking at a question on trade liberalization versus protectionism if you drop the assumption of constant returns to scale or the assumption of no externalities in trade theory so that's a nice signposting phrase if we drop one of the assumptions but then you have to drop them and see where it takes you I quite like this phrase, from a different perspective. Now that's quite interesting. That leads you into thinking about different schools of thought, different viewpoints of, of economists that might have a competing or contrasting uh, vision or argument to, to put forward. And linked to that, another school of thought in economics believes that. Again, that's a lovely, lovely little signposting phrase. Straight away, it leads you, it guides you into an alternative perspective and examiners really appreciate that, providing the analysis that flows is, is correct. If we disaggregate the question, we might argue that. Disaggregation is a really important evaluative tool. So instead of talking in the round, in the big picture, you try and get a level below. So disaggregation is particularly important. For example, you're disaggregating the effects of the rise in interest rates. Instead of talking in very general terms about aggregate demand, you disaggregate by thinking about particular industries, particular businesses or sectors, or groups of consumers and savers who might be affected by a change in interest rates. That's what's called disaggregation. And the easier way to think about it, it's called breaking down to sort of a deeper level. If you do that, oftentimes you get a different perspective. You can really get deeper into the question. A common one that exam, uh, examiners find students using is in the long run, the main benefit and cost might be. That's a, a, a favourite phrase that's used. On balance, this is a neat, tidy way to start a paragraph. On balance, uh, we might argue that. Evidence suggests that is a nice, good signposting phrase to use in evaluative language. Now, you have to have the evidence. So maybe, maybe for example, you're drawing on evidence in the data response question. Or even better, maybe you're bringing your own knowledge, your own contextualised knowledge into being. Particularly those who got stuck into the subject, and you've got some good evidence that you want to bring to the argument. My main argument is, is a neat signpost. So you're picking out lots of different arguments, but actually what you want to do is you want to tell the examiner my main, my most convincing, coherent argument is as follows. And that's sometimes a phrase you can use in the final paragraph. I did have a student a couple of years ago who insisted. He said, this is the best way to signpost the examiner is to start your paragraphs in evaluation or to evaluate. And this guy was winding me up by the end of the course. Every single essay, he would use the phrase to evaluate, comma, brum, brum, brum. Did it work? Yes, he got a top grade. But, but I think I would avoid using that kind of language in exams. There we go, there's a few signposts for you if you want to improve your evaluation skills.